People keep asking why midnight prayer. I want us to know that we can pray at any time of the day whether it's in the morning, afternoon, evening, night or even at midnight. God can hear us no matter the time we pray but the midnight hour is the best time to catch the thief that came to steal, kill and destroy while men slept. Midnight is a time of transition from one day to another and both good and evil takes place during that time. Satan launches attacks at midnight and that's the time people are most vulnerable to spiritual attacks. As a Christian, you can break open closed doors as you pray at midnight. You don't need to pray from 12 midnight to 3 a.m. Even if it's only for 15 minutes or 30 or 45 depending on how long you can hold it. That is very okay. Paul and Silas prayed and praised God at midnight and the doors of the prison opened. Acts 16.25 Keep watching to understand why praying at midnight is very important. Thank you. Tonight, we are taking over. This is the best time to get those Christians as they are sleeping. You know the spirit of a sleeping man is weak and harmless at midnight. While they are sleeping, we are going to wreak havoc on them. We are going to steal, kill and destroy them. It's time to launch attack on their spiritual life. It is time to lay siege and render people defenseless. Go and interrupt their destinies. Go and bring their stars to me. Go and inject sickness into their lives. Go and kill and bring their blood to me. Go. Yes, Master. I will do as you've said. I will visit every household that are weak in the spirit and destroy them. Your assignment is to visit that man that calls himself a pastor that has been disturbing us in this neighborhood. He must be sleeping now. Go and weaken his spirit and destroy him. Inject his blood with sickness so that he will not be able to stand and pray again. His prayers has been disturbing us a lot. Give him problems that will divert his attention. Ha 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 ha. Yes, master. I will do as you have said. You should go to bed. We just finished a three days powerful program and I know you must be tired. This is 11 p.m. in one hour time. It will be midnight. I would like to do my usual midnight prayers before retiring for the night. Must you pray ever midnight? The fact that you're a minister doesn't mean that you shouldn't rest. You stress yourself so much for the church members and they don't even value you. Don't worry about that. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. I am doing this for God and I pray that He'll continue to use me mightily for His glory. Alright then. I am off to bed. Good night. If you are not so tired, you can join me to pray. Let's set the kingdom of darkness on fire. They love to operate at midnight and as children of God, we are to attack them with our weapons of warfare which is prayer, the word of God, praise and worship. Matthew 13 verse 25 says that while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. May we not allow the enemy to sow tears among our wheat in Jesus' name. Amen. Who is doing that with you? I can't pray tonight because I'm so tired. Being a pastor's wife comes with a lot of responsibility and it's tiring. Stop complaining for this is your calling. Since you're feeling tired, we can just pray for 15 minutes and we're done. Remember, Proverbs 6 verse 6 says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Verse 9 says, How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Not tonight. The spirit is willing but the body is weak. Good night. She is sleeping. Let me inject sickness into her body. She will wake up and not be able to move again. Abba Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come before you tonight. I decree open heavens tonight and I bind contrary spirits by fire in Jesus' name. When praises goes up, blessings comes down, therefore Lord as I praise you tonight, let your blessings overtake me and my household tonight. According to the scriptures in Psalm 119 verse 62 which says, At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Lord, receive my praise and worship tonight. Any meeting arranged tonight in order to frustrate my tomorrow, scatter by fire. Any witchcraft gathering in the covens of my village, residence, ministry, business and workplace, enough is enough. Catch fire in Jesus' name. Any power using the night to steal from me and my household, be destroyed in Jesus' name. Every satanic activity against me and my household, be destroyed by fire. 
powers of the night troubling my dream, expire right now in Jesus' name. Wickedness of the night assigned against my life, expire by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Let the angels of God fight for me tonight. Master help. Send help. I cannot penetrate. I cannot enter the pastor's house. His house is surrounded by men in white. Somebody help. Somebody help. Who is he to destroy my member? I will handle this pastor or whatever he is by myself. He has just ignited the anger in me. I will destroy him and cause chaos in his life. He has been disrupting my work by delivering my people. He has been healing the people I afflicted with sickness. He is one man that I need to take down. Holy Spirit take over. What is this that I see? I take authority over every territorial demon. According to the word of God in Jeremiah 30 verse 16, Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured and all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give it for a prey. My father, my father, let the lion of Judah rise and devour all they that want to devour me tonight and let them be destroyed. Let my adversaries become their own captors. Every power searching for my face in demonic mirrors, your time is up. Scatter by fire in Jesus' name. I cover myself and my household with the blood of Jesus Christ. From tonight, let no power trouble us for we bear in our body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where are you and why are you obstructing me? I have come to destroy the owner of this house. Tonight, I must deal with him. Ha ha ha. No. 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 I must destroy him. I must destroy his family. I was sent to the earth to steal, kill and destroy. I will never allow these ones that calls themselves children of God to have peace. I must get them. I must get them. Why should they live a peaceful life when I'm here? I must hinder the plans of God for their lives. I must make them live a painful life. Why can't I ever get that pastor? Why is he always praying and why are those men in white always at his house? I give up. I give up. I'll just look for a weaker vessel to destroy. The Bible says in Psalm 91 verse 5, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fleeth by day. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, because the Lord is with me. My Father, you are the glory and lifter of my head, therefore any other demonic power that wants to outshine my glory, let them be destroyed by fire in Jesus' name. Every gathering of darkness against me and my household by day or night, scatter in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as the daylight breaks forth later this morning, so let my testimony break forth. Take away from my life any event of sorrow and bad news. Take away any event of tears. I decree and proclaim that I shall not mourn, weep, suffer loss, see emotion, see shame, see defeat and I shall never beg to it. It is well with me and my household in Jesus' name. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for I know you will do more than I'd asked in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Somebody help. Somebody help. Is anyone at home? I can't feel my legs. My head is banging. What's going on with you? I don't understand auntie. I slept well and didn't feel any pains before going to bed but I'm waking up with pains all over my body. I can't even feel my legs. We need to go to the hospital. I'll just get someone to help me take you to the car. I have witnessed test result. Everything is fine, I don't understand what's wrong with her. She's screaming of pains and she can't feel her legs. For now, we have given her sleeping pills so that she can rest. What could be the problem then? She was very okay last night before she went to bed. Madam, I'll suggest you pray for her or tell your pastor to put her in prayers. It could be a spiritual attack, I've seen so many things as a doctor. We will do all we can for her. Thank you doctor. Good day sir. Please, help me put Whitney in prayers. She is in the hospital right now. She woke up this morning with pains all over her body. I will. I speak healing over her life right now. The word of God says it by his stripes, we are healed. The will of God for us is to be in good health. Therefore, I command her to be healed right now in Jesus' name. Amen. It is settled in Jesus' name. One of the most powerful time to fight against the enemy is the midnight hours. Midnight prayer is the prayer done from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. Just as I said before, 
You can pray for 15 to 30 to 45 minutes or more depending on how long you can pray. This is the hour when the enemies gather to take decisions and carry out their nefarious acts against their victims. This is a period where people receive bad dreams and spiritual attacks. Mysterious things happen the most at midnight. This is peak period of demonic and witchcraft attacks. In the book of Exodus 12 verse 12, the word of God says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and smite all the firstborns in the land of Egypt, both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment, I am the Lord. The question is, why is it in the night? Again in Acts 16 verse 25 to 26. Paul and Silas prayed and praised God at midnight, and there was a big earthquake. It was so strong that it shook the foundation of the jail, or the doors of the jail opened and the prisoners were freed from their chains. The midnight hour is a very powerful and strategic time for Christians who understand the power and mystery behind midnight prayers. Jesus demonstrated the power and importance of midnight prayers. He made many of his decisions after midnight prayers. His final preparation for the cross was made after an intense midnight prayer. He even encouraged his disciples to pray along with him. He expressed his disappointment when he returned and found them sleeping and said such prayers could save them from temptation or the devil's trap. We must arise and fight, we must wake up and pray. Thank you so much for watching, this means a lot to me and I really appreciate you. God bless you as you make praying at midnight a must. May the Lord help us and strengthen us to pray always in Jesus' name, Amen. People keep asking why midnight. But why am I not seeing all this evil befalling me ahead in the spirit? Why are they not revealed to me before they happen? Why are things taking me unaware? Calamity and different tragedies keep happening to me, and I can't see them ahead before they manifest, yet I'm a child of God. What am I not doing right? It's okay my sister, it is well. How can it be okay? How can it be well? Is it that God loves me less? Why is it that I keep moving from one problem to the other? From one calamity to the other? And God never for once revealed to me, the impending dangers. At least I've heard how God reveals things to come to his people. Or could it be that God does not recognize me? Please don't talk like this. God does not love you less. You're also special to him. In fact, he longs to reveal things to you. I want you to know that God is never happy seeing his children suffering or going through pain. You see, there is something I would like to share with you. Did you know that you have eyes in the spirit? God wants to open the eyes of your spirit to see what is happening in the supernatural realm. Maybe in your own case, you don't even understand what it means to be seeing in the spirit. Maybe for you, your concern is how do I begin to see things in the spirit? Or how do I see ahead? the impending dangers? Don't worry, I will share a few things with you that will answer all of these concerns. The first thing I would like to share with you is be aware that you have eyes in the spirit. I thank God you know quite well that you have eyes in the spirit, if not, you wouldn't be longing to see things in the spirit before they happen. This is absolutely the most important thing to note. Paul prayed a simple but very powerful prayer for the saints and Ephesians. He said I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people. You see, these are the spiritual eyes that God wants to open, so you will begin to see what is happening in the supernatural. Throughout the Bible, the heart often represents the center of a person's physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual life, the whole inner person, encompassing the mind, will, and emotions. Thus, the eyes of your heart refers to our inner perception. Our inner eyes are enlightened when they open and light is cast on them, allowing them to see and understand the things of the Spirit. Paul prays for the Father to give believers the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The book of Isaiah 11, 2 says and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. True spiritual enlightenment can only come from the Holy Spirit, just as it is stated in the scriptures. The natural mind cannot comprehend the things of God. Christians have received God's Spirit, 
not the world spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. The Spirit of God opens the eyes of the heart to see, receive, and understand the truth in God's Word. The Christian life is an ongoing experience of growing in our faith, knowledge, and understanding of God and our relationship with Jesus Christ. Before salvation, we lived in darkness until the true light of the world shined in our hearts. But once we've come to know Him through salvation, the eyes of our hearts are opened. He becomes our Savior and Lord. Jesus says to us, Blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. If we keep seeking the Lord throughout our lives, we will increasingly get to know Him through experiential sanctification. We will discover that He is our Abba Father, Good Shepherd, and Bright Morning Star. We will slowly transform into the image of Christ, until one day the eyes of our hearts are fully enlightened, and we know Him face to face in complete perfection. Do you want to see things in the Spirit before they happen? Once you are aware that you have eyes in the Spirit, then you need to ask God to see in the Spirit. The book of James 4, 2 says you do not have because you do not ask God. Once you know that you have spiritual eyes, you have to learn to come to the Father and intentionally ask Him to see. I do this almost every time I'm about to minister or when I'm praying for people. Like Habakkuk the prophet writes in Habakkuk 2, 1, I will look to see what he will say to me. I stop, close my eyes and ask, Lord, is there something you want to show me when I minister to this person? Is there something you want to show me? As I listen, he will oftentimes move on the eyes of my imagination as he begins to show me things, give me a scripture or he begins to speak to me. I realize the more I ask what's on his heart, the more it renews my mind to actually receive revelation from God. It's from a place of intimacy that I start to see consistently even when I have not asked Him to reveal anything to me. God on His own shows me things. Really? Oh yes, my sister. You see, when God's presence shows up, He begins to heighten your senses and your senses begin to reveal Jesus to you. You need to develop an intimacy with God and this will give you room to ask for and know His mind every time. You will be able to know what is on His mind or what He's doing around you, just as in the case of Abraham. In Genesis 18, 17, the Bible says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? God revealed His mission to Sodom and Gomorrah unto Abraham. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened to you. Matthew 7, 11 says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? Therefore, ask Him and you will receive. Ask Him to open your eyes that you may see, and I'm confident that He will open your eyes to see things in the spirit realm. While you ask God to open your eyes to see, there is something you also need to do if you must see, which is consecrate your eyes. But how do I prevent my eyes from seeing things that will blur my vision since they are all around? Almost everywhere you go, you see things that do not glorify God. The devil is working over time to put images, sights and sounds in our minds that shouldn't be there. We are slowly being desensitized to evil in movies, billboards, magazines, TV shows and the internet. I have walked out of movies many times to protect my eyes. If you want to see, you have to consecrate your eyes, your ears and your heart. There is a need for you to have no tolerance for anything that's going to steal your gaze from Jesus. The enemy knows what you behold, you become like. His biggest fear is that you will see God as He is and know who you are. God wants to see us step into a greater dimension of the supernatural, and it's going to take burning ones who are willing to protect their eyes and ears so they may be consecrated before the Lord. You see? If you're able to protect your eyes and ears and stay consecrated before the Lord, you will always be alerted in the Spirit and you will be able to see things before they manifest. God wants to open your eyes to see. He wants to reveal great and mighty things to you. He doesn't want you to be caught unaware. It's not God's plan to allow tragedy to befall you. He wants you to see it ahead and average it before it manifests. Ask God to see in the Spirit. Protect your eyes from evil and gaze upon the Lamb upon the throne. I hope this blesses you and encourages you that the eyes of your heart were created to see the supernatural realm. 
Receive this blessing to activate your spiritual sense of sight in the name of Jesus. Do you want your spiritual eyes to be opened? If that's your heart desire, please pray these prayers with me. Father, thank you for making it possible in Christ to have my spiritual eyes open to see, ears to hear your voice and my mind to perceive your direction per time, in Jesus' name. Father, remove the blindness from my ears, remove the darkness off my path, send the light Lord. Send your light Lord into my soul, in Jesus' name. For your spirit gives sight to the physically and spiritually blind so they can see again. Father, pour on me afresh your spirit, in Jesus' name. O Lord, open my eyes, I want to see, open my ears, I want to hear what the spirit is saying, in Jesus' name. O Lord, my Father, take the scale off my eyes and mind so I can see and perceive things in the spirit, in Jesus' name. O Lord my Father, lay your hands on my eyes and bless it that it may see indeed and in reality, in Jesus' name. Father, open my eyes to see the defense you have put around me in the Spirit, in Jesus' name. In Acts 2, 17, your word says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, save God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. O Lord my Father, give me dreams, give me visions, cause me to see as a New Testament Spirit-filled believer, in Jesus' name. Father of light, open my mind to perceive and my understanding to comprehend the things I see and hear, in Jesus' name. I receive by faith my spiritual sight, in Jesus' name. Every spiritual scale that Satan has used to blindfold me spiritually, be consumed by fire, in Jesus' name. Lord, anoint me with the IESFs of the Spirit so my vision can be as sharp as the eagles, in Jesus' name. I rebuke dullness and blurredness of vision. Lord, let me see and hear clearly as I should, in Jesus' name. Let me see from the highest heights and farthest mountains, in Jesus' name. O Lord God, grant me grace for spiritual sensitivity, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Father, for answering my prayers, in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thanks for praying. Hope you sincerely prayed all the prayers raised. From today, the blood of Jesus will speak better things over your life in Jesus' name. I command every satanic covering, blocking your spiritual vision to catch fire right now, in the name of Jesus. I command every evil veil covering your face, to be removed by the fire of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Every ancient power that has caged your spiritual revelation, opened by fire, in Jesus' name. I command any strong man who says you will not see the goodness of God in your life, to be destroyed in Jesus' name. Any evil things done to your spiritual eyes by wicked powers, catch fire, in Jesus' name. I flush your eyes with the blood of Jesus and with Holy Ghost fire, in the name of Jesus. Every arrow fired to kill your spiritual vision and to hinder you from seeing the plans of the wicked, clear away in Jesus' name. I set on fire, the embargo of you could not make it in life, upon your destiny. Burn to ashes in the name of Jesus. By the power in the name of Jesus, receive deliverance from blurred vision. O ye veil of darkness covering this face, hear the word of the Lord, fall off by fire, in Jesus' name. From today, nothing will take you unaware in Jesus' name. It shall be well with you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please, don't forget to like, share and leave a comment in the comment section. Also do well to subscribe to this channel if you haven't.